We was in Walmart the other day. And one of the things that happened to me has just got me stirred up, boys. What happened to me right there in Walmart? Me and my wife was walking down the center aisle there, you know. And I spotted a lady. She had the holiness look. You know what I'm talking about, Brother Greg. She looked like one of us. And I got just a smiling because I saw she saw us. And she headed right toward us. I like that. And so by the time she got there to me and my wife, I was smiling. And she said, excuse me, you look like holiness people. Oh, I like that. I said, yes, ma'am, we are. And she asked me a question that has got me stirred. She said, so tell me, are you Trinity or are you Jesus' name people? Now, now, wait a minute. I thought about that for a minute. Am I Trinity or am I Jesus' name? I said, well, yes, I am. She said, no, no, I asked you, are you Trinity or are you Jesus' name? I said, I sure am. She said, you're not understanding my question. See, what I'm asking is, do you believe in the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, or are you Jesus' name people? You better believe I do. You better be- I'm glad to be amongst some Jesus' name people tonight. Amen. Woo! I'll tell you. You know, there's a lot of things that we could go into a little bit here tonight about things that we don't like that's uh, happened and, and crept up amongst us in these last days. I understand that. But the one thing that has got me stirred up and a little bit angry tonight is the fact that we Pentecostal Trinity holiness people, we are very shy and timid about how much we use the name Jesus. We don't want to be considered Jesus' name people. We're Jesus' name people. I got so aggravated, brother, because see, I wrote down some scriptures. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Woo! Wherefore God also hath highly exalted Him and given Him a name. What's that name? Jesus. Hath given Him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Neither. How in the world could they ask me if we are Jesus' name people? Neither is there salvation. In any other. For there is no other name under heaven. Given among men whereby we must be saved. Now listen. That scripture that I read there a while ago. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. The next scripture goes on to say... Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Woo! Let me read one of, your, one of the benefits. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Woo! And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. I'm preaching about Jesus' name. I'm a Jesus' name person. How about you? I don't know what all you've got tonight. I don't know all about your personal life. But I know this, 
There is no other way as good of a person as you are. It don't matter how moral you live. It don't matter how honest you are. It don't matter how hard you work. It don't matter how good of a person that you are. There is no other way. No other way to be saved but through the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus! Woo! And so, with all of your troubles, all the things that you need, all the things that's going against you, I've got a few problems. How about you? I believe that life is but a few days and full of trouble. Amen? And in all of the trouble, yet we have the promise that whatsoever we would ask in His name. What's His name again? Say it loud enough for the devil to hear it. I want the devil to hear it tonight. Say it again loud enough for the devil to hear it. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Woo! And whatever it is that you're needing in your life, in your home, in your body, it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Woo! Pastor, I was in revival in a faraway state and preaching about praying for the sick. The uh, pastor realized I had put a little emphasis on the name of Jesus. He was worried about that. They were a holiness group of people. No, as far as the outward appearance, they looked very good. But he had to get up after I got done. No, he didn't have to get up. He thought it would be wise after I got done preaching to get up and they make a disclaimer. He said, you know, uh, we, we believe everything Brother Doug said tonight. And um, I know that he mentioned the name of Jesus a whole lot tonight. But uh, I want you to know that he does believe in the Trinity. He does. Let me tell you something, church. We are Jesus' name people. I don't know why that God has put such emphasis on the name of Jesus. I don't know why I did it that way. Why did he choose to give him a name highly exalted? Above all other names. Why didn't he make him kind of like he made Saul? Head and shoulders above the rest. That whenever he walked on this earth, people would go, what a man. Right? Why didn't he do it that way? And then we could preach when Jesus walked on this earth, he was bigger than everybody. Why didn't he make him so have such an aura about him? Such a beauty about him? That whenever he walked into the place, Jesus had such a beauty about him that everybody would go, that, 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 that must be him. That must be him. What a man. But you know what the prophet Isaiah said? That there would be no beauty about him. That he would be desired. In the flesh, he was no big, tall, strong, beautiful man that everybody, you know, said, Wow, what a great guy. Just look at the way he looks. That wasn't it. God could have decided to go that direction. And if he would have, that would have been perfect, brother. Because see, if that's the way he would have went, that would have been all right with me. Amen? But he chose to give him a name which is highly exalted. Above all other names. That there would be no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. Why did he decide to use the route of the name? I don't know. God has made a lot of decisions, has a lot of ways that I cannot explain to you why he did it just that way. Why he says it's got to be just this way. Why this makes, this is, God, God is not operating on your logic. Come on now. All right. Come on. All right. I know that crosses some people because I have had when those terrible days 
Brother uh, Nichols, I shouldn't say it that way. When I was bound by a church, you know, I pastored, you know. You understand. Thank God for evangelism. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do when I leave here tonight? I'm going to wave by. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do when I go home tonight? I'm going to get in the bed and go to sleep. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Who isn't here tonight is not on my mind. It is his. Thank God for evangelism. Understand, my friend, that the name of Jesus is his way. And I remember in those days of pastoring that I had more than once people come to me, and this is the reason that they explained to me they did not have to live what I just preached. Brother Tuck, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but see, that doesn't make any sense. I, I want you to understand where I work at. I want you to understand my parents. I want you to understand that's my grandchildren. Understand today. <laughs> Uh-oh. Felt something right there. Understand their younger brother. It don't make sense what you're saying. See, that man named Jesus. With that highly exalted name. He has a way of thinking. Which is above mine and your way of thinking. His thoughts are higher than your thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. And I can't tell you that everything makes sense about God. But I can tell you that God is God and always will be God. Amen. And ain't nothing me and you will ever be able to do to change the fact that God is God and always will be God. Woo! Thank you for the name of Jesus. Thank you for the name of Jesus. I would never try to explain in my feeble vocabulary, explain to you the reasoning that God chose a name. Come on, bro. Come on. A name of five letters. Come on. And that name would have such power. Come on, <laughs> now, right now, Pastor, I, I said the word hate right there. And, you know, my kids are homeschooling through uh, your church here. And my wife has been getting involved in their lessons. And my good wife, you all got Kleenexes ready to cry with me here. She told me yesterday, Doug, the more that I work with the kids in school and the more I hear you preach, the more I realize you use a lot of bad English. Oh, my. <laughs> I did say the word haint, but I hope that you Columbus people know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Folks, the name of Jesus, it's God's way. It's not my way. It's not my decision. It's God's way. And I do not ever want to... F you know how powerful that name is? The, it is so powerful that... Right now, you might be doubting me. That's okay. Come on. Right now, I want everyone in the building that you're where you can. I understand babies and so forth. But if you're where you can, I want you to close your eyes. Come on, <laughs> right now, all over the building, just close your eyes. I want you to say in whatever tone that you would choose the name of Jesus. Just say it a few times. Say it again. Come on. Just keep saying that name. Why is it? What? My Jesus. 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 Come on, church. Say it some more. Jesus. Lift your hands however you feel in your own way. Praise the name of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. 
Wherefore God also hath highly exalted Him and given Him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. How do you glorify God the Father? How do you glorify God the Father? The Bible teaches us very plainly that it is not appropriate by God's decision for us to praise the Holy Ghost. It is not appropriate for us to pray to the Holy Ghost. It is not proper for us to ask of the Holy Ghost. That's just scripturally not God's way. How do you give glory to God? You know, I understand that there was a day that whenever God was searching to make that perfect sacrifice for man's sins, Jesus was willing to be that sacrifice. Thank you, Jesus. But I also understand that there was a time in the Garden of Gethsemane. There was a time there in the Garden of Gethsemane that understand Peter had not repented and prayed and asked for strength like he should have. I understand that Judas at that very moment was going to collect his 30 pieces of silver. Jesus' heart was broken for his closest friends had turned against him. And he knew and he understood that in just a few hours he must be that sacrifice and shed all of his blood. At that time, laying there for about the space of an hour, crying and weeping until his sweat became as great drops of blood. And he got up. Thank God for Peter, James, and John that's out here praying with me. And he got up to look at them. And they were asleep. They were asleep. Oh, how it bothered Jesus. He was under great stress. Jesus has been tempted in all points as we are tempted. I can tell you, friends, there has been the temptation of stress that I just wanted to get mad and scream and yell and do something crazy. I just wanted to quit and walk away from it because of stress. That is something that we go through. Don't you know it's Jesus? God up and he sees this Peter, James, and John asleep, knowing that Peter would not repent. And all that Judas is collecting is his 30 pieces. All knowing that he's getting ready to face death and face all of the tragedy of pain and suffering. That is great stress upon Jesus. And he went back and he got down and he changed his mind. He decided he didn't want to go through this. And he said, Let this cup pass from me! In our words, I've changed my mind. I don't want to drink this cup. It's just too bitter. It's more than what I can take. I don't want to do it. But I'm so glad. I'm so glad that he said, But not my will, but thine. But it's not my decision, Father. It's your decision. Woo! And this God looked down and saw his only begotten son laying on the ground, crying and weeping in the stress, overcoming his physical being. His spirit was always willing. But his flesh was weak. It was weak. 
Can you imagine all of those angels around the throne worshiping God? Whenever Jesus said that, can't you imagine with me that some of those angels, Hey, 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 God, we'll go, we'll go get him right now. Send him. Boy, he's been through enough. Yeah, this is a lot harder than he thought. I'm going to go. Send me, Lord, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. But God, he looked way out there in the future. Some 2,000 years later, he looked and he saw me. Hey, I have got so many faults. I have got so many imperfections. There has been so many times, Pastor, that I've had to come back to the altar say, Lord, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Why didn't I do it that way? Why did I do it this I'm so sorry, Lord. I've had to repent again. And because he saw that I needed redemption, I needed a great sacrifice, and this was it. The father looked down upon his praying son. All of those angels ready to go get him. Frank Jesus could have called the angels himself. But Jesus did not want it to be his decision. He wanted to pray, but not my will, thy will. Amen? And it was right then that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. My friends, that father, I want you to know we have just fallen in love with Brother and Sister Nichols, their two bratty kids, and all of the folks at the Shadeville Church. We just love you all. But understand, my 13-year-old boy, who was so glad to be with his grandparents tonight, and we got home yesterday, been gone since December, and he was so glad to be home. We love you all, but he loves them better. I'm sorry. Yes. Understand, as much as I love you all. There's no way that I love you so much. I would take either one of my boys and allow them to be sacrificed for you. And I love you. But greater love hath no man than this, that a man would be willing to lay down his life for his friend. The greatest love that I can have for you is that I am willing to die for you. That is as much love as anybody can have for you. But oh, my friend, there is a love. There is a love that is so much greater. It is so much deeper. It is so much wider. It is the love that so loved you that at that moment he gave for me he gave his only begotten son that's a lot of love and so what does he ask back a God with such power and such love what does he ask back he asked And glory. But he does not ask for you to spend all of your time praising the Father. And my, he deserves great praise because he has got greater love for me and you than any person could ever have. But what he asks, what brings him glory, is when you praise his son that brings him glory that 
makes him happy. That brings him glory. He has set up heaven in a way that there is only one door to get into heaven. It's the name of Jesus. You know, I uh, have somebody that's kin to me that had a great ideal. They didn't want to uh, consecrate themselves over to the Lord. But they didn't want to go to hell either. So they thought of a way to get to heaven, they thought, without consecrating themselves over to the Lord. (laughs) You're going to like this. They bought a church, a church building. I mean, spent all kinds of money and set a church up in a nice building, put money in the bank form, and just always made sure they had money. He wasn't a wealthy man. He was trying to work his way into heaven. (laughs) Have you ever been around? I have a great aunt, my daddy's aunt is Mennonite and praise the Lord for the lifestyle that they live of Puritan, uh, of of being free from all the things of this world. Thank God for it. And I have got to be on vacation around some Amish people. Very conservative people. Amen. But understand with me, you're not ever going to work your way into heaven. That door doesn't exist. You're not ever going to earn your way or sacrifice your way into heaven. That door doesn't exist. There is but one door. Jesus. Jesus. There is but one way to bring glory to the Father. Jesus. 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 I am so glad tonight to say to you that the Shadeville Church of God is a Trinity church. Thank God for it. We believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost of being very three distinctive people that make up God. That's who God is, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. There are three that bear witness. Amen? Jesus wasn't insane when he was on the cross. He wasn't talking to himself. He was talking to the Father. Amen? My friends, we're not only Trinity people. We are Jesus' name people. Come on here now. We're not ashamed of the name of Jesus. You know, Brother Jerry, you're going to like this one. I'm sorry, Brother Kazee, you're going to like this one. I am such a Jesus' name person. I'm going to tell you, there is only one reason why that I don't get so mad at some of those church signs that say, Jesus name church. I want to get me a can of spray paint and go up there. And... <laughs> There's only one reason why I don't. Because that'd be a sin. <laughs> That's the only reason. <laughs> Boy, if I found a loophole, I'd buy me a gallon of paint. Come on. <laughs> because we are so afraid to be free with the name of Jesus. I want everyone to stand across the building. I know that there are some problems amongst some folks right here. Perhaps it is mistakes, sin, bad decisions, things that taking you the wrong way. What you need is not a better banker. You don't need a counselor. <laughs> well, I won't even go into it, but to make a long story short, I was going to tell you about a good preacher friend of mine that went the other way and joined a big Pentecostal denomination, and, and uh, he's having some marriage counseling through his pastor. He's having some marriage counselor, a marriage counseling through his pastor, and goes into these counseling sessions as if he is a psychiatrist. Thank God for a pastor, that's a Dr. Nichols back here, (coughs) that we can go to him and we can talk to him and he can talk to us. (coughs) Amen? 
But if I've got Dr. Nichols figured out, I think the first thing he's going to ask us is, let's pray. Come on now. We don't need psychiatrist, psychologist. Thank God. You all know the story probably as good as I do now. You've heard me preach it so much. Eight years ago, I lived in a nursing home. Thank God for every one of those medical professionals that helped me. Eight years ago, I was legally blind, 90-something percent blind. Thank God for every one of them that tried their best to help me. They tried so hard. They did all that they could. I was wheelchair bound. My left side was paralyzed. They'd done everything that therapy could possibly do to convince me that I was going to be all right and I could walk. And then I'd fall on the floor. They did all they could. I am not putting them down. I appreciate all that they did. And I believe they did all that they could. But oh, my friends, I am so thankful that the night came that they about half carried me up to the front over on this side there at the home church. And they got the oil just like that Isaiah 53 says. Anointing him with oil and praying in the name of the Lord. Isaiah didn't know his name yet, but we do. Aren't you glad we know his name? Woo! And they anointed me with oil in the name of Jesus. Hey, you all want me to t- tell, what, tell about that night a little bit? Go ahead and sit back down. <laughs> well, what did you say, brother? I'll find out. What time is McDonald's closed? We'll get you there. <laughs> hey, when they got done laying hands upon me, anointing me with oil and praying in the name of the Lord, I felt such a charge. But I didn't think anything really changed. So they took me back and they set me back on the front seat. All right, if I sit on the altar, Pastor. Sit me back on the front seat and my brother Dwayne got up and sung that good song. There's a miracle in the making for you. (laughs) Thank God. Oh, and the more he sung that song, the more I sat there, I started feeling better. I mean, I, had been, I was in pain all the time, and things just quit hurting. I just started feeling better before I was thinking about what I was doing. I didn't even think about what I was doing. I just wanted to praise the Lord because I was feeling better. And I raised up that hand right there, the one that was paralyzed. And I just started praising the Lord. With my paralyzed hand, I was praising the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm feeling better. Woo! Pain's leaving and I'm feeling better. And I looked up there on the platform, and there stood Missy's brother, Brian Miller, and one of my closest holiness preacher's friends who was there preaching that night, Kevin Webster. And Brian and Kevin... They walked all the way to the end of the platform and they looked down at me. <laughs> and they're talking about me and pointing at me and, and snickering. And I'm sitting there thinking, here I am getting a blessing. Brian and Kevin's laughing at me. Brian Miller and Kevin need to be sanctified. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I'm being honest with you. I had no idea. And Brian realized I had no idea what that snickering at. And he went, Lord, have mercy. That's my paralyzed arm in the air, church. Woo! Oh, the many times. Oh, come here, brother, and help me. Come here. Oh, I'm talking not once or twice, but hundreds of times. Those physical therapists take my arm there and lift it up for me. Hold it up in the air. Hold it up there. And then they'd say, now I'm going to count to three. And when I let go, you hold that arm up there, okay, Doug? You can do it. Make up your mind. You can do it. One, two, three. 
it would hurt every time. Brother, there was times, thank you, there was times that I said, please, I can't do it. You've got to make up your mind, God. You can do it. Thank God for a made-up mind. There's a lot of people that need a made-up mind in their lives. But I'm going to tell you something. Your made-up mind is still you. And you are very limited. Come on now. It's not mind over matter. It's the name of Jesus. You know why that that arm is up in the air tonight? Not because I had a made up mind. Not because that great uh, men that was better than anybody else prayed for me. Not because that I am the better than anybody else and the Lord decided to give me a miracle. No, no, no. But because Jesus, in all of his pain, he let them rear back and stripe him, beat him and scourge him. And with every stripe, he suffered in great pain. But he paid a price so that I could lift that arm off tonight. My arm is up in the air because with his stripes, we are healed. I was so happy and so thankful that my arm was up in the air. I was waving at folks. I was just getting my friends' attention. Everybody that I would get their attention. Brother Jason, you was probably there that night, wasn't you? I don't know if you was one of them or not. But I'm telling you, everybody, I'd get their attention. I'd wave at They would jump up, some of them would run, some of them would shout, some of them would dance, some of them would scream. I mean, it was pandemonium around there. And now I'm thinking, I should have waved at these people years ago. (laughs) I had no idea why that they were just, I just thought it was over my arm. I waved at my good friend Dave up on the platform. He stood up and he went, Jesus opened up my blinded eyes. Woo! I said, Jesus opened up my blinded eyes. Woo! If you've got sickness in your body tonight, I hope that you give me the wonderful opportunity to do just what the Bible said. Lay hands upon you, anointing you with oil in the name of Jesus. And understand, it will not be in my name. I can't help you. Now understand that we are afraid to believe that miracles can happen right here at the Shadeville Church of God. Come on here. Oh, I'm telling you the truth. There might be some of you that ain't a bit afraid of that, but there are some of you that are afraid, afraid to believe that a blind person could open their eyes here. Why do we believe that? Because right now, up above the Shadeville Church of God, in the airwaves, there are evangelists and pastors. Right now, they are on the radio. And on the television. And they are explaining about their last miracle campaign. Their last healing crusade. And all the great miracles that took place. All the blinded eyes that were open in their last crusade and campaign. And for $50, they'll pray for you. My friends... It's not about your $50 seed. Come on here now. It's not about their ministry. It's not about them at all. It is about the name of Jesus. I said it is about the name of Jesus. Understand? We're not on TV tonight. This isn't live going across America tonight. 
Come on now. I'm not bragging you tonight about how many countries are watching us tonight. But what I'm telling you, this is a holiness preacher. I'm standing in a holiness church. And I was blind. But a few of my family and friends, a bunch of nobodies, took a little bit of olive oil, anointed my forehead, and prayed in the name of Jesus. I can see, I can see, I can see. Why? Because Jesus opened up my blinded eyes. Jesus is my healer. How now can I be afraid to praise the name of Jesus? I don't know how long it was. I sat there so thankful, so happy that I could praise the Lord with my paralyzed arm. That I was able to look around and see every man clearly. I was so happy. And Brother Miller got up to this mess. My walker was standing right there. I had never made a step in many months without my walker. And I wasn't no good with it. That night I'd already fell three times coming into the church. I was using a walker, not because the doctor was making me and physical therapy was making me. I was using a walker because I was stubborn and wasn't going to get back in the wheelchair. It wasn't working out too good, but I was trying. And I made up my mind that the Lord was going to have my trust in that surface. That is a made-up mind. Not that I was going to see that my left hand was going to raise, that I was going to be able to stand without any help. Understand, I did make up my mind that I was going to stand without any help before. Pastor, I made up my mind one night. My daddy was there helping take care of me there in Illinois at the parsonage. And I made up my mind. I mean, I was sick and tired of being uh, cared for as a baby and and being taken care of, all that stuff. I made up my mind. I have to go to the restroom, and I'm going to go. And nobody ain't going to come to me. I'm going to go. I got myself sitting up on the end of the bed. Nobody you've ever seen had a more made up mind than I did. Then my dad got mad. That's all that I need. (laughs) Come on now. Friends, my mind now, the Lord's going to have his way. And I stood up, and I didn't fall. I stood there while they prayed the dismissal, and I wasn't falling. I was standing there not holding on to anything. And as they prayed that dismissal, I fought the hardest battle I have ever fought in my life in here. I have never made a harder decision than that night. Something down here was saying, this is it. You can do it. Walk. Take a step. Something up here was saying, your mom and dad's back there. It's going to be a fine way to end this service with everybody gathered around you making sure you're all right because you're lying on the floor. Grab your walker. Tense my muscles. I took a deep breath. I said in the name of Jesus, it was not me and my made up mind because I've been here before. Come on, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I didn't fall. Come on. Come on, Luca. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I didn't fall. Come on, man. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I'm still not falling. Come on. Woo! I'm not falling because of the name of Jesus. With his stripes, we are here. Woo!
And tonight, all that my goal is tonight is just to convince you, I don't think convince is the right word, to remind you, to stir you up. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. I'm telling you, it's about Jesus. Jesus. Let's all stand. Let's try it again. <laughs> you know, a few years ago, I prayed the way I always prayed when I'd come to the altar or every day when I'd pray is I just, you know, get right in there. Lord, it's me. I want you to know that uh, I need this, Lord. Let me tell you. Thought that was the way you're supposed to pray. He said, You have not because you ask not. He said, to Ask what you will in the name of Jesus. Amen. But understand, since I've been a daddy, I've learned that those little bratty kids of mine can come up to me and say, Hey, Dad, let's go to McDonald's now. Let's go. I ain't going. <laughs> but you all have seen that gorgeous little blonde-headed girl I've got that looks just like me. <laughs> she has come up to me and she'll say, Dad, can we go to McDonald's and get a half a meal because I love you so much. Oh, yeah. She has, fa I don't know who told her that, and if you're here, I'm, I'm fixing to preach on you. I don't know if you're the one that told her this. <laughs> my little girl has found a way of writing little notes to me. Oh my. <laughs> Ain't no sense in that. They make me feel so good. Yeah. <laughs> and then she gets everything she wants, and I'm sick of that. Yeah. You know, she works, before she asks me big things, she works her way up to it. I know I'm going to get asked when I wake up that morning and I see something hanging up over there in our camper that we live in that says, you are the greatest dad in the world. I love you so much. Love, Chelsea. I know something's up. Because praise is what I like from my kids. It's what you like from your kids. You're right. Come on now. You're right. Now, we all wish we had more money. You're right. Amen. She's with me on that one. <laughs> but none of us wish that our kids would sacrifice and give us their money. That's not what we want. We don't want nothing from them but their praise. Their love. They're, you're the greatest daddy in the world. Now I'll confess to you, I've got a whole stack of all those notes. I've never threw one away. I've got a little door in the trailer there that I stick them in. I've got quite a few of them I'm up to. I love them. And then understand that Jesus, he loves praise. He loves worship. And whenever you're bragging on Jesus and you're just loving him with all you got, then you can tell him what you want. He'll give you the very desires of your heart. You can talk to him, worshiping him, bragging on him, loving him, and the Lord's going to take care of your prayer. He's going to answer your request. Do you all know I'm telling you the truth? I'm telling you the truth. I want right now, uh, we've got all these altars up here and these front pews. And, and if you can't fit up here, get wherever you can fit. I want you to get somewhere. And I want you to promise me that you will spend a few moments, not, you know, 15 seconds and ask for 15 seconds and hurry up and go to the bathroom. No, no. Spend a few moments just bragging on Jesus. Just loving on him tonight. Who would agree to do that?
Who would agree to do that? Would you spend a few moments just loving on Jesus? Let's come with all of the reverence we can. Get down on our knees if you're able. If you're not able, get however that you can to show reverence and appreciation and love. And let us worship the name of Jesus. Let us praise Him, brag upon Him. And oh, when you feel the Spirit moving, then my friend, you can go ahead and tell Him just what you need. Come on and brag on Jesus. Come on and brag on Jesus tonight. Brag on Jesus.